Hello everyone, and welcome back to this next video in the eHoudini Academy Foundation module. In this video, we are going to continue and build the actual utility node for the extrude and texture. And we'll need this to apply textures to the majority of our building, because um, the extrude and texture is going to allow us to quickly build the pieces and automatically and correctly apply the right kind of UVs and the right materials as well. Now, to make this utility, we can already use our existing uh, simple Unreal Texture node that we already have from the last video and build upon that. So we don't have to go through the entire process of setting up all the presets again. We can just use that one and basically copy its parameters so we can simply continue from there. But we do need to set up a couple of things, including the actual extrusion feature. Now, like I mentioned before, the reason that I'm creating a separate extrusion type node is because the poly extrude node by definition cannot be compiled. Now at this moment, when we finish this video, this node is also not going to be compilable, but that's not going to be because of a poly extrude node. It's going to be because of the um, quick shade node inside of this asset. And in the last video of this uh, foundation module, we're going to simply remove this asset and we're going to move it to the end of our network. So this node will be fully compilable, which will allow us to gain a lot of speed gain, especially in, for example, this part of our loop here. And we'll go over that later. For now, in this video, we are going to start working on this asset here. Now, I already went over this node um, in the previous videos, but let me give you a quick recap on what it's going to do inside of the network here. So let me just expand this a little. Um, the majority of this node, specifically this part here, deals with the extrusion system. So this part here emulates the same behavior that the poly extrude has. So if I grab this asset and I go and um, add maybe some depth to it, and you can see that it can extrude upwards. And we also have the ability to change, for example, the different aspects of the extrusion. So we can remove the top, the sides, or the bottom. And we also have some group assignment to it. So we can identify what the top is, where the sides are, and the bottom. So all of that is very similar to the current um, poly extrude nodes behavior, right? This system here. So we're going to replicate that. And next to this, we are also going to make sure that we have some different behavior for cleaning up our asset. So if we look inside this node and we make sure that we return it back to normal, then at the bottom, we have some basic cleaning behavior. So if we have some overlapping faces or whenever we have one of our corners, we need to make sure that these are properly merged. Um, we're gonna deal with that first. Also the normals. So all of that is gonna be part of this node. And then in the second part, we are going to start working on the actual UV system. Now, we do need to apply UVs to all the sides of our cube, or whatever shape we give it. That being the top and bottom over here. And then the sides over here. And depending on which mode we're using, either by sweeping around the shape, so we have a continuous texture applied along the sides of our shape, like so, or in the X and Z direction, purely as a um, grid or world space oriented uh, projection. So in X and Z, and that's what this is gonna deal with. And then this part down below here is basically a repetition of what we already did in the simple Unreal Texture node. So that part, we're just gonna copy and then adjust some names. So let's get started on that. Let's open up our project. And the first thing that I would like to do is go up here to our student utility simple Unreal Texture node. We're going to right click on it and then say show in asset manager. And then in here, we can find our current definition for this asset. What I want to do is right click on the definition for our simple Unreal Texture node and duplicate it. This is going to ask us how we want to save this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to rename this one to student utility 
extrude and texture like that and then if you copy the label and you paste it up here it will add underscores so this will match and then down below I'm gonna replace this part of the name so after the slash and before dot HDA and let's make sure we have some underscores in there as well like so so if you have this then you can click accept and this will create a duplicate for our node um, right here so this one's already installed now at this point let's create this node okay so let's place one down let's press tab and find the student utility extrude and texture asset let's grab that one and the first thing I would like to do with that is replace its icon because this one isn't as suitable as the one I actually want to use. So let's grab a UV quickshade node. And I would like to use its icon instead because it looks like an extrusion and it also has a texture applied to it, right? So it's more suitable. Let's um, open this one up, type properties. And I'm simply gonna copy its icon name over here close it again then we can get rid of that and then under the um, extrude and texture utility make sure you grab this one let's open its type properties and then here I'm gonna paste it in now as for its default color that it comes with I'm gonna leave this script alone because it's actually um, the right color I think so let's apply this or accept and in this case, I haven't actually unlocked the node yet. So let's say unlock and save. And that should unlock it, save it, and apply the changes. Okay, so um, in this case, let's go ahead and copy this grid over here so that I have something to work on. Because of course, this node does need an input. And then let's go and dive in. Okay, so now that we are inside of our network, Let's have a look at what part of this network we want to keep and what we want to do with it. Now, um, over here in my example file, you can see that the left section of my network and even this part on the right is actually very similar to what we already have. Because in this case, we do have our Unreal Material assignment. We have our Houdini Material assignment with the file path and then below just the file name. And then up top, we have our UV uh, texture node, the bounding box based method, and then our UV transform. So these parts are actually very similar. And what we can do is we can just duplicate what we already did here, and that should work, right? Now we do need to add a UV project node to this as well. Um, and then on the right, we have our more advanced X and Z projection that we also have to deal with. However, first I would like to deal with the extrusion features, so the top and bottom section here, and then we'll deal with the rest of this. Okay, so let's grab this, and I'm gonna add a dot here, a permanent one, by clicking Alt and clicking on the line. And if you click again, it will indent that dot and make it permanent, so we can simply plug it in and then disconnect it. And while these nodes will throw an error because they now no longer have a valid input, that's not a big problem. We'll hook it up again later. So let's drag this over to the side and let's plug this all in again. Okay, so now that we here have the input and the output, let's start building the extrusion system first. For this, um, let's create a netbox and let's put it up here at the top, like so. And I'm going to call this one Split for Extrusion. And what I would like to do here is separate out every part of our geometry that we don't want to extrude. Because before I go and extrude anything, I first need to make sure that 
parts that aren't selected from our group field are not going to be extruded at all. They're going to be left alone, right? So for that, let's go ahead and um, add a split node here. Let's plug that in. And I'm going to say split by group. Then let's grab our interface of the node, right? This one, make sure it's the correct one. If you're not sure, close it, go up top, open parameters, and then here it is. Of course, you can also just reference the name. That also works. So let's grab our group up here, our group field, and plug it in to the split node as a, a relative reference, right? Now with that, if we supply a group to our geometry, so let's quickly set that up. Here we have our grid, okay. Let's grab some of its elements. And I'm going to group those and we can do that through the shelf if you want. Go to um, model and then click on group. That will add a group node based on your selection. I'm going to call this one um, temp group. That will do. And then on the node, um, we won't be able to select it just yet because right now this group field is not linked to this split node here. So we do need to actually set that up. So in order to get this drop down to work, what we can do is we can go to the type properties on this node, then go to the group. Um, parameter up here, navigate to its menu tab, which controls the uh, drop down right there. And we need to reference the correct node that we want to grab the group field from. So if I go over here, that's the split by group node, and then its group parameter up there, we want to grab its group information. Okay, so this menu. Let's grab the name from our split by group node go to our op menu over here and let's replace UV texture one that came from the uh, original asset we made and re let's replace it with this. And if we apply that, then now you should have your drop down right here. So now we can select that group. And what the um, split by group node is doing right now is basically split our geometry based on this group. Okay, because inside here, it really only just has two blast nodes. But that's exactly what we need. We need to blast away the geometry we don't want to affect, and then merge it back together at the end. So let's do that first. Let's create a merge node here. So this is going to first split our geometry to the part that we want to affect and it's going to leave alone the geometry that we don't want to affect. And then it merges it back together. I'm going to name this merge node here, the merge surfaces. Now at this point, because we split our geometry into two sections and then simply merge them back together, they are disconnected. Now if you look at the point numbers, you can see that now our two sections here are grouped and ungrouped section have uh, multiple point numbers in between. So these are no longer connected and that means we need to fix that potentially. Now I do want to make this an option for the user so they can choose what they want to do with it. Um, in this case, I'm gonna create a fuse node. And let's plug that in. And I'll call this one the simple point fuse. Okay. So that will at least make sure that whatever geometry was disconnected by our group will now be reconnected. But I don't want to enforce this upon the user, so let's add a switch as well. Set that one up. And I'll call this one the merge end result. Now, I also want to be able to potentially clean my geometry. And for that, I can use a clean node. But as you might recall, the clean node does have a tendency in some cases to remove 
certain types of very small geometry, like slivers of your geometry. And in other cases, um, it's just a bit slower because the clean node does have a lot of systems in it. And if we were to run our asset, um, then the clean node will, to some extent, slow down our node. Not by much, but it will to some extent. So perhaps we don't want to use the clean if we don't need to. So I'm gonna leave this as an option as well. So to do this, um, I'm simply gonna plug it in. Now the clean node does have a coincident points function, which is very similar to what this fuse node is already doing. So it doesn't really matter if I turn it on or off, but in this case, I'm just gonna enable it. Then next to that, we have remove the generate primitives. So this one here will try to get rid of any primitives that are zero space or really tiny. Um, I'm gonna leave as an option, so I'll hook it up to the interface in a moment. And then down below, uh, we can fix any overlaps we might have. Now the overlap feature uh, basically is what I think I've already shown you before. If we were to grab a poly extrude, for example, and if I were to extrude this stuff up, right? Um, let's turn off the um, connected components here and make it individual. And in that case, we'll have a lot of overlapping primitives between all of our grids, right? If I plug that into a clean node, and I turn on fix overlaps, then it will get rid of them. So that's a useful option right there. Now, if you were to turn off delete overlapping pairs, then it will keep at least one of those primitives around, so we don't have any doubled up geometry. But in our case, I simply want to delete every coincident face if we have them. So I'm gonna keep this on like that. And in this case, I don't need that poly extrude, so let's get rid of that. And then let's plug it in. So uh, here we have our switch. Let's first plug in the clean node. Now call this one clean overlaps. And then let's grab the fuse node and let's plug that one into the switch as well. So it should look something like that. Now um, we need to hook this up to the interface. So let's open it up go to type properties and here we have our original parameters again we will have to make some changes here to make it compatible for our node but I do want to have a section on this node that deals specifically with the extrusion feature so um, let's set that one up first let's go ahead and create a new folder in here for the extrude and groups feature let's go ahead and grab a folder from here on the left and I want to drag it below our separator, below the uh, Unreal Material path, so about there. Then um, let's grab another folder and I'm gonna grab everything down here and drag it into the bottom folder. So the top one is gonna be called Extrude and Groups. That's gonna be the basic extrude functionality, okay? And then the bottom folder is gonna be for texture system. Let's rename that one to textures. We'll deal with that in a minute. And then let's grab an ordered menu from on the left, plug it in there. And for this one, I'm gonna name it the um, merge output. And then under its menu tab, our first entry, which is zero, is gonna be disabled. Then for token one, um, I'm gonna say fuse and remove coincident primitives. Or maybe prims, keep it simple. And then for the last token, I'm gonna just say simple fuse. So that's gonna be the settings for our switch, right there. And then uh, as a default value, I'm gonna set this to one. So by default, it is going to use the fuse and remove coincident prims option, okay? 
Let's apply that. And then I would like to grab from the right here, from my clean node, the remove degenerate primitives option. So we can enable this cleaning system or disable it um, if we want to. Because sometimes I don't want to enable this. It might be a bit too destructive, depending on our geometry. If it's really tiny, it might accidentally remove uh, primitive slivers that we actually do want to keep. So I'm going to grab that and drag them below. Now, we don't need this option if our um, merge here is set to option 0 or 2. So we're going to say we're going to disable this if our merge output is not equal to 1. Okay, so if this is 1, it's going to be enabled, otherwise it's disabled. As for the rest, we'll uh, leave this on by default, and then let's apply that. Okay, so at this point, um, let's say this output here is good. We now have the ability to fuse our information back together. If I grab the parameters from this node and go to its extrude and groups tab, we should now, if we hook this up, have a refused piece of geometry. So we still have that group, that temp group, that's fine. Um, but we can now enable or disable our fuse node as we need to. Okay, so that's our basic merging behavior. Now let's actually do the extrusion system. Let's grab this and move it down because this is eventually our output, right? In fact, let's grab all of this and move it into its own netbox down below. So uh, that's our input, this is our output. So let's name this one the output uh, netbox. Okay, so next, um, what I want to do is I want to emulate the behavior of the poly extrude. Now we can't actually use a poly extrude node because like I mentioned, the poly extrude node is not compilable. And that's one of the main reasons I'm recreating this node to begin with. Because if I grab a poly extrude, we do have that icon there, the um, gear icon, right? So in order to make this work, we're gonna use a sweep node instead. So let's grab one of those. Let's um, plug that in to the first input coming from our split, because that's actually the geometry we want to affect, this part here. Now the sweep node by default isn't going to do anything because it also needs a profile or a cross section for our sweep. It basically allows us to take any edge and then give it a cross section and then it can extrude that cross section along the initial shape. I'm not going to go too deep into the sweep node here, um, but basically what we need to do is provide it a line or a curve or any other shape that we want to extrude out. Let's give it a line node. Plug that in. Now you can already see we are now extruding every single edge of our grid, which is not the behavior I'm actually looking for. Okay, so we do need to fix that. Let's create a divide node and let's remove every single one of these internal pieces. So let's go ahead and fix that. Let's create a divide node right here because the divide node will allow us to remove, if we plug that in, all the edges using the remove shared edges option. If we turn that on, it will remove all of the edges inside of our geometry that aren't on the outside or an open edge on our mesh. Okay, so right now basically this is one solid piece of geometry. Now if you have any holes in your geometry, like let's say this was a more complicated mesh. Um, let me quickly make something for us for that. Let's say I grab my grid and I grab some internal faces and I remove those. Then now we have a hole inside of our mesh, right? Let's go inside. And now what it will do is we'll actually output 
two primitives because what it's basically done is it removed every single connecting edge between the outside and the inside uh, opening of our uh, mesh and the divide node is at least smart enough to provide a secondary primitive for any of these holes basically um, but it's inverted it's basically facing downwards and then what you can do is you can take that and you can boolean it back out so you regenerate your hole but in this case we don't have to worry about that because all we're going to do is we're going to sweep it now at this moment this uh, sweep node isn't quite doing what i want it to do and we do need to configure it because right now it's simply extruding it up but it doesn't take properly into account what the inside and the outside of my geometry is if i were to grab a poly extrude node here and then we're to try and replicate this. So let's grab that. Let's um, extrude it upwards by a certain distance in global space. And let's also only output the sides here. So here you can see that we are outputting the sides and they're facing outwards. And the inside is facing inwards, right? Our sweep node is not doing that. It's mixing up the inside and the outside. So we do need to correct for that. Um, and to do that, we need to set up a couple of our settings here in its construction by using the tangents option here under tangent type. If we look at the mesh right now, we can see that the extrusion that we did is actually pointing in two different directions because originally our planes are pointing up and down that means that our extrusion is also going to be up and down, right? It's going to be facing in the same direction as the actual extrusion. Now, if we look at our tangent type and we change it to ignore the curve, then it will simply look at the Z direction to determine what is up and down and not to the curve itself. If we do that, it is going to simply extrude, in this case, up, right? It will treat it as the same mesh. But because originally the winding of our output here is in the opposite directions, one is clockwise and the other one is counterclockwise, the output of this sweep is going to make each one point inward and outward. Now it's still pointing in the wrong direction. So let's go over to our surfaces here. And here I would like to um, turn on reverse cross section. And by doing that, we invert our extrusion. So now the outside is outside and the inside is inside. Okay. Um, now this is a little complicated, but I did cover this to some extent when we were dealing with our um, profile curve for the building. So this has mostly to do with the vertex order and how the sweep interpolates it. And then next we do need to change some other settings as well. So we don't have some weirdness going on. First, I would like to turn off stretch around turns. And this one will deform our geometry if we have very sharp turns in some cases. And I don't want any deformation to take place. So let's turn that off. And then um, down below on our sweep node, let's go over to pitch, yaw and roll for the rotation. And I'm gonna say, do not apply a roll or a twist at all. I don't want this geometry to bend I don't want it to twist. I want it to be nice and straight up. So that will deal with the basic shape of my geometry. However, there is one more thing that I need to adjust, and that is to remove any uh, scale or rotation attributes that are coming into this node. And that's to prevent our sweep node from taking those into account when sweeping. And I can demonstrate that by creating a attribute create node. And let's give it a simple scale, okay? So over here, let's create a scale attribute. This is gonna be a float point size tree. And you can already see that at values zero, this sweep node no longer outputs anything. Let's give it a value of 0.5. And as you can see, it does actually affect the length of my extrusion. The sweep node takes into account the size or the p-scale, potentially. If I use a p-scale, this will work too. 
um, of whatever value I have inside this node. In this case, this only has one value, so only the first one will apply. So let's make sure this can't get messed up. Let's create an attribute delete node. Let's plug this one in below our attribute create here. So we can simulate this being an attribute that comes in from the top of our node. Let's call this one clean scale and rotation. And then as for its attributes, I'm going to remove the point attributes for scale, B scale, and I'm also going to remove the attribute for rotation. Now the rotation attribute is a matrix attribute and that's not as easy to create, but basically it describes an orientation in space and Unreal can sometimes produce this. We already made sure that at the top of our network over here, we were already removing these, but just in case, because it can actually break our sweep here from being straight up, pointing straight up, I'm also going to remove it over here. Okay, so with that out the way, now our sweep should always point straight up, at least based on my tests, okay? So um, let's go to our sweep node again, and I'm going to name this one to sweep reverse no stretch with UVs, and we'll set those up in a moment. Y up vector. Okay, so this system now with these settings should ensure that we always have an extrusion pointing straight up based on this line. So um, this line here determines which direction it's actually extruding in and nothing else is gonna affect that. So let's go ahead and plug this in at the bottom of our network in this merge node. I'm gonna grab this line, pull it over there, and for now, I'm just gonna add a dot over here on the right. So we have a straight line going down. So that's the first part of our extrude. And that part here is excluded right now because it's not in our group, okay? Then next, let's deal with the top and bottom of our extrusion. So um, here we have our extrusion, right? Let's add a top and bottom to that. For this, we can grab from our split node again, and I'm gonna remove that poly extrude because I don't need it. Um, I'm gonna create a divide node again, and I'm going to set this up so we can have an optional triangulation on our mesh um, over here under the type properties. I'm going to add an option for that under the extrude. So let's say we grab our convex polygons over here, plug that in, and I'm going to say triangulate results. By default, I'm going to turn this on. We can turn it off if you want to. And let's accept that. And then as for the triangulate node, um, let's name this one divide triangulate. And over here, let's turn these options both on for don't generate slivers and avoid small angles. So we get a proper triangulation, no matter the shape of our object. And then if we look at our interface, we should now have this option so we can turn on and off this triangulation. I'm gonna grab this and I'm also gonna plug it in behind our sweep node as well. So. Um, we can have it for both pieces of our geometry, the top, bottom, and the sides, okay? Now this divide node stands out a little, so I'm gonna rename this one to remove shared edges. So at least we know what it does. Now back on the left, um, let's grab this, and I want to move one of them up, and I want to reverse the other one. So we have one for the bottom of this extrusion. Let me just um, set this up so it's easier to see. So this is the bottom, and I want to reverse that one using a reverse node. So if we flip that around, that will work as our bottom. And then let's grab a transform node. And I'm gonna call this one 
um, raise surface or raise top surface. Now we need to set up a couple of parameters on our tool so we can control this. Let's go ahead and open up the type properties on our tool again. And then in here, um, I would like to create a extrude depth uh, float value. So let's grab a float. Let's drop it in, say, below our group right there. I'm going to add another separator in between. Let's call this one distance. And then the name of it is going to be extrude depth. Then as for its range, um, I'm going to set this to a default of zero and a maximum of 10. And I am going to lock the minimum value at zero. So we can't extrude below, right? In this case, it's going to be a somewhat limited extrude node. I only want it to be able to extrude up. I'm not going to deal with any sideways directions or downwards directions that would make the node more complicated than it needs to be. So in this case, I'm just going to say under its channels that I want a default distance of one. And let's apply that. So now with our extrude depth option, let's copy that. Let's plug it in here in our raise top surface under translate Y. So that will extrude or move up the top surface. Okay. And then over here on the right, where we have our line, I'm going to grab the length value and we're going to plug it in there as well. So with that, we now have um, the basic extrusion that we need. Let's go and I'm going to plug them into our merge as well. Now, as for the order, um, let's take the reverse first, then the raise top surface. Then we'll do the um, divide triangulate node and then finally the split by group. So that will plug it in like so with the final piece of geometry, the unselected, unextruded part last. All right. So now at the end of our network, we now have our basic extruded box. We have some control over how far it extrudes. And because we are cleaning up our coincident faces, um, if we don't extrude anything, it's not going to do anything at this point. But if we say simply fuse, then we do have some uh, doubled up geometry. So we might want to actually get rid of that as well. Up here under the reverse node, let's add a switch. I'm going to say if zero depth. Let's add a null node as well. And in that case, um, if our extrude depth is zero, then we are going to switch it to off, otherwise on. So one, otherwise zero. So now we can see if our line has no length, then this one's going to turn off. I'm going to copy this set up here. I'm going to paste it over here to the right. So in case our um, extrusion is no length, I'd also don't want to output our sides either. So that way we only keep our front, right? So that way we do have geometry. But the moment we set it to zero, we don't. Okay, so with that, um, I think we have a basic enough system here. Let's next set up the um, group system that we need in order to know what the sides are, what the top is, and what the bottom is of our extrusion. So over here on the right, let's create a group node. And I'm going to call this one side group. Let's plug that in. Let's uh, color it green because it's a group node. And what I want to do is to be able to set up what name this group node has from our interface and also be able to turn on and off if we want a group. And then I also want to be able to turn on and off if we want an extrusion uh, for the sides 
at all. Okay, so let's add two switches below here. First one is going to be for our group, so we can turn that on and off. Let's call this one side group toggle. And then I'm going to add the other switch that one's going to be called output sides. And in that case, if it's zero, it's not going to output anything. Okay. So let's go ahead and plug this up to our interface. Let's um, open up our type properties on this node again. And in this case, I need all these three over here. Now I'm going to add a separator above my merge overlap option. And then let's drag in first the ability to output the sides or not. So let's grab that toggle, drag it in. I'm going to change that to a toggle option. And I'm going to call this one output sides. By default, it's going to be on. So if we apply this, then now we have the ability to output our sides or not, and this will switch. Okay. Then let's grab our group toggle so we can turn that on and off. Drop it in below. I'm going to name this one to um, side group toggle. By default, I'm going to turn this on and then let's turn it into a toggle as well. So we have a second toggle right here. So if this is on, we can switch if we want to group or not. And then next, let's grab our group name. Let's drop it in below as well. And I'm going to change this one to side group name. Like that. By default, I'm going to change its value to side. And then I want to just make sure that these options are only going to be enabled uh, when these ones are. So for the disable when flag, I'm going to disable this if the group option is turned off. So let's grab our side group toggle and say disable this when side group toggle is zero. And then I'm going to hide it in case our output side is off. Okay, so let's grab that one. So if our output side is off, we're not going to output this at all. Simple enough. Then let's copy this and go to our side group toggle as well and plug it in here as well. So if our sides aren't being created, we don't need this at all anyway. So if we apply that, then now we have the ability to turn off our sides altogether, turn off the group creation, and then this becomes gray, or we can set our group. Now in this case, we do have a dropdown, which allows us to select an existing group. We don't really need that, so I'm going to remove that feature. Over here under the side group name, let's go to the menu, get rid of that and then turn it off. So if we accept that, then now we've lost that um, drop down. So that's fine. And then next, let's also plug this in for the top and then the bottom. So let's grab this, copy it over. And let's start up with the um, top first. So I'm going to grab all of this here, move it over to the side a bit, make some space, and then let's plug this in. So this one's going to go into the top part right there, and then we need to make sure we plug that into the bottom of that. Then we're going to copy this again, and plug that up as well. 
So now we have one for the bottom and we have one for the top. Someone like that. Now I'm going to have to rename these. So this is going to be the top group. The top group toggle and output top. And then on the left, let's call this one the bottom group. The bottom group toggle. And the output bottom. Okay. Um, then let's go to the interface and let's update this as well. So let's go to type properties again. And in this case, I want to grab my output sides, the side group, the side group name and the separator. And I'm going to make two copies. So copy paste. That should do it like this. Make sure that the values below are two and three respectively. So you don't go and mess with the original output sides parameters. We don't want to touch those. So for the output sides two, let's go and set this up. Let's call this one output top. Then this one is going to be top group toggle. And we do have to update down below here this as well. And let's do this one for the last one as well. And then we need to repeat the same thing for the bottom. So um, I'm going to quickly do that. It's going to be output bottom. Maybe you can copy paste the value that might speed things up a bit in some cases. And then for the last one as well. So yeah, setting up interfaces always takes a bit of time, but it's worth it in the end. So let's just do this. Now, if you haven't messed anything up and you apply that, then now over here, you should have a couple of different values. And I do notice I haven't changed my default value. So let's quickly update that as well. For our group name, our top value is gonna be top. And our bottom value is going to be bottom. Okay, so now we can, if we hook this up, uh, control this. But first, let's um, test these buttons out. So if we turn off output top, then they disappear. And the same thing for this toggle. And bottom does the same thing as well. Okay, so let's hook this up. Um, here we have our top group node and I need to replace its variables. So over here, our top group is going to be our top group name. Let's override that one. So that should override it. If it doesn't and it starts giving you an error, that might be because it has added back ticks to it. So I'm going to remove those. I don't want them there. Thank you. And then last, let's go and plug up our bottom group name as well. So I'm going to grab this one, drag it over and say relative channel reference. And if we do that, we get the same problem, right? And let me quickly explain um, the difference between having a expression field in a parameter and having a standard parameter, which requires backticks. Because in this case, it errors out because of the backticks and before when we created an expression inside of a field, if we didn't have backticks, then it would evaluate as a string, right? So the difference here is that this is currently being evaluated as an expression. And if we were to remove these backticks, it would work because now it's a proper expression inside an expression field. And if we click on this, it will evaluate as the actual value here. Okay. However, by the way, if you see these dotted lines, 
you need the middle mouse click on it because you can't swap between the expression and the name. Middle mouse click on it and that will allow you to switch. So let's grab this one and I'm going to delete this channel. Okay, now let's plug it in into this black field. Right now this is just a parameter, a string parameter. And if we plug an expression into a string parameter like this, now if we go and click on this, we see that it's still evaluated as the actual string. And if we were to look under our groups over here, then that's what it gives us, right? It can't even output some of these characters, so it just makes it into underscores. That's basically what this looks like as a group name. So what we need to do to fix that in this case is to actually add the backticks, right? So there's some backticks. There we go. Now it does evaluate it. And in this context, if we try to left mouse click on this name, it doesn't toggle because in this case, it's not an expression field. It's considered a string field. It's a bit of a tricky thing to wrap your head around, but now we need to use the middle mouse button to toggle. And now you see this dotted outline in the string field that will show us the result of the expression. If we middle mouse click on it again, we will see the, the actual expression itself. So a little bit of a tricky thing to wrap your head around, but basically if the field is green, it means it's evaluated as an expression. And in that case, we don't need backticks. If the field is black, it is evaluated as a string field, which means any expressions inside need to be inside backticks. Bit of a complicated thing to wrap your head around, but since I encountered it here, I thought, let me just elaborate, okay? At least now you know what it means. So um, let's finish setting all of this up uh, before I talk your ears off. So let's do the uh, top group toggle next. Let's go to our output top, and I'm going to change this one, let's do it by hand, to output top like this. And if you already have that parameter, you can find it right there. So um, it's a toggle, right? Let's select that one. Let's change this one to output bottom. Like that. Then for the top group toggle, let's change that one over. And the same thing for the bottom group toggle. Now, basically, if the name is correct, you don't even need to select it in the drop down below. I just wanted to emphasize that. So uh, now that we have this, we should now have the ability to enable or disable different parts of our mesh, right? So over here, we can output the sides or not. We can change our extrusion height. We can output the groups, output the top, its group or not, and the bottom, and then its group as well. Now we still have that temp group on here, and I'm going to leave that alone because that was part of the original input. Um, so with that, we now have our basic group and extrusion system uh, done. Now the last thing I would like to make sure of is that when this comes out of the node, um, I also want to be able to fix the normals as well, because we did do some cutting over geometry. So I'm going to add a normal node here. Plug that in. I'm going to set this one to use weighting method by face area again. And I'm going to add a um, switch here so we can turn it on off. Let's name this one um, toggle normals. So let's plug it up like that. And then let's add this one to the interface as well. So under type properties, let's grab this uh, toggle normal switch, grab its value, and let's drop it in under the extrude and groups folder. So down below, down here, let's change this to a toggle as well. And let's name this to fix normals. But 
by default we can say this is turned on and then that should do it. So if we apply that and we accept. So I'm going to grab this net box. I'm just going to wrap it around everything here. Grab it all. And let's place it inside. So now we have our basic extrusion system done. Now for the uh, texturing system, we need to build two more net boxes here and then a system up here to analyze the shape of our geometry. Uh, this is where it's going to get a little bit more complicated. However, because this is going to take a bit more time, I am going to split the video here. So now that we have these systems here completed, uh, in the next video we'll deal with this part here for the UVs and the texture assignment. So I hope to see you in that video. Thanks for watching this one. And let's continue it in the next one. Have a good one.